So in the second, much uh, shorter part of this tutorial series, we're going to look at texturing the silver bottom part of the plastic packet. So I've turned off the display of my top part, and we're just focusing on the bottom. And let's just see what that looks like when we render it. And we see we've got a problem here, and the problem is caused by the fact that the polygon to subdivision surface is not working with the large uh, multi-sided polygon that we have and that was created by uh, the polycap. And we can deal with this just by going down here and by adding a subdivision node here into this network. And we can see that it's now a bit better. Let's just subdivide it by two and that's now pretty much okay. So as the next uh, part of this, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a depth map uh, in Houdini, which we can then reuse uh, as part of the texture. Now, of course, it's possibly easier to create a depth map made other applications, but I just thought I would demonstrate how it could be done in Houdini. So I've got some very simple uh, geometry here. We've got a tube. Uh, and we transform it first one way, then the other way. Uh, we've got a line with some points. Uh, you probably can't see the points. And then we just copy the alternate tubes like so and merge everything together, together with the ground plane to produce this pattern. And the idea is that we're going to use this to create a depth map. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is set up a camera. But to do that, I'm going to look through the orthographic uh, top view. There we go. And if I control click on the camera, it will create an orthographic camera for me. Uh, but we are going to need to change one of the parameters because we're going to need this to produce a square image. So let's produce one that's 512 by 512. And I'm going to zoom in like so and we want to try more or less doesn't have to be completely accurate to get this so that it's covering a part of the texture so it will wrap and that's gonna more or less be okay and the next thing we need to do is set up a render node so let me lay down a mantra node and I want to render this out to a file. So let's choose a file. And I've got uh, here a pick directory. And let's call it depth.pick. So we're saving it in the Houdini format. And I'm going to leave this all at the defaults, except I'm going to add an extra image plane. And the extra image plane I'm going to add is PZ. And that's the depth image. And I'm going to leave it as a float. And we need to change the filtering for this. We need to change it to closest surface. And we need the pixel filter to be closest sample filtering, like so. Uh, so that's going to produce an image that we're going to be able to extract depth information from. So let me just render that out. And that's giving me an error because I didn't have a light in the scene. Uh, that doesn't actually matter since I'm not going to be using uh, the main image. So let's now bring that into the compositor. So let's switch to the compositor. And let me just get rid of this, which is something I did earlier. But um, let's lay down a file node. And let's bring in the depth picture like so. And let's view that here. So what we're seeing here is not the depth map, but the standard render. But we do have a depth channel. Uh, and that looks completely white. And the reason it looks completely white is because it has very small variances. But if I hit the equalize button here, we can see that in fact we are getting a depth map. And the equivalent of hitting the equalize button is to use and equalize 
cop like that. Now we need to make sure that it is applying to the PZ channel. So we need on the mask tab here, we need to add PZ here and that will ensure that this is working. So let's have a look at that. So let's have a look at our PZ channel and we can see we now have our depth map. A couple more things we need to do. I need to convert this into the color information. So I'm going to copy the depth map that we've now got uh, and I'm going to copy it into the C or color plane and I'm going to copy it from the PZ plane. So now our color plane is going to just be a copy of our PZ depth map. And the final thing I need to do before saving it out is to invert it because obviously actually we want the lighter areas to be the ones that are highest and this is the reverse that the lighter areas are further away from the camera so we need to invert it and then we can save it out and I can save it out I think I've saved it as depth.bitmap like so and let's just render that out and then I'll have a look at depth.bitmap and show you what it's like uh, and we can see that that's now worked so we're now back in our original scene file and I'm not really that happy with this because you can see there's this jiggling on the edges so I'm going to try and sort that out and the way I'm going to try and sort it out is by putting the subdivide node straight after uh, one second straight after our blast node and that should produce much more refined edge and then I can select all polycap it and then subdivide it again perhaps and now that's got a much less wavy edge and let's just see what that looks like rendered and we can see that the, the waviness has now disappeared The next thing I want to do is prepare a texture uh, for this uh, piece of, uh, of silver paper. And in order to do that, I'm going to export a texture image. And a texture image, well, first of all, sorry, I'm going to need to UV project a onto the vertices of this a texture. Now we can see by default uh, that what's happened is that the UVs are projected so that they completely fill uh, the square and that's there's some distortion here because the scaling in these different axes is different. So in fact what I'm going to do is revert these to their defaults so that we have a square texture space and then I'm just going to increase them like so as a square so that we get our object contained entirely within this square and then I want to output an image of this object in its texture space and I can do that and I, I, I want to do that because I can then use that as the basis to build up a texture map which is going to act as a bump map for this object so I can save out a texture image by right clicking here and you can see I've got save texture UV to image and I've got it set up to 512 by 512 and I'm going to save it out to something called silvertex.jpg. Now by default this, this comes up as 128 by 128, that's far too small so it is important to enlarge that. So let's accept that and let's just have a look uh, at that image. And here it is, we can see it's 
got a lot of detail in there but you get the basic outline of the texture space so a quick word on what I've done to create a texture image and I've done this using GIMP you could use any texture painting program that you like so the first thing I did uh, was create this layer here uh, the one which has the these uh, crisscross patterns on it and I did that by first of all using that depth map that I created as a pattern and then filling a selection here then I raised bits around the edges and I blurred it a little bit the next thing I did was create some text you won't be able to see this uh, but I've created some text and arranged it so it's in this position here I then created just some darker spots and in fact uh, let me enable this gray layer I created these darker spots here which are going to dent in the texture then finally I created some lighter spots which would push it out a bit so that's how I created the texture the reason that it's got this gray background is because in Houdini by default uh, you have 50% gray means no displacement or no bump anything darker than 50% gray is a dent anything lighter is raised up out of the surface so what I'm doing here is creating a 50% gray layer uh, and we can see that this is just a standard mid gray and then I'm carefully adding these layers so you can see that the mode here is addition so this is adding to that layer but I've got it turned down to a value of 50 so it's not getting the whites are not getting washed out and then for the lettering which is going to push down I have darkened it uh, so that's only darkening it then of course we're going to darken it for these little bits of scratching around here and then finally we're going to just overlay that lighter pattern here so I've saved that out as a JPEG to use as a bump map for our silver paper well let's now create a material or two materials for our two objects and let's start by creating uh, a plastic material uh, so I'm going to start with a glass so let's add a glass material to our scene and let's move to the shop view and let's rename this plastic top so we need to change a couple of things about this the main thing we need to change is the refraction because by default Houdini will think that this, this is a very thick piece of glass because it won't find a back side to it and let's just put this material onto there uh, and it will you can't really see it here but it will refract the light far too much so one of the things that we need to do is turn on thin film refraction and that will make it uh, realize that it's just a single thin piece of plastic uh, the next thing we might do is just tone down this index of refraction a bit make it say 1.4 And the next thing to do is to create a material for the silver bottom. And I'm going to use chrome material for this. So let's add that to the scene. And let's call it silver base. And again, we can use this pretty much unchanged, except that what we're going to do is add a displacement map. So let me enable the displacement map and I'm going to turn off true displacement so this is just going to be a bump map and the reason uh, that I can do that uh, is that the effect of the displacements are so small at the bottom here that they're not really distinguishable from a bump map so I can either put the bump map in here or I can put it in here I'm going to use this one and this is my final bump map texture 
and let's just add that to our bottom object. And we're now seeing the bump map appear. Let me just zoom in on this so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, I accept that uh, it's rather too dramatic, so I'm going to go to this material and I'm just going to tone down the value of this displacement to about there. That's about right. And the other thing that I want to do is probably add some lights to the scene now, because we're just using the default headlight here. So let me add an environment light. And I've got a, a uh, map that I'm going to use, and I will um, give the credit for this map in the project file. Uh, and this is just going to let's just restart this. Uh, this should give us a little bit more of an interesting render. And I'm just going to also change the default renderer so that it is using physically based rendering. Because that'll, it'll finalize itself more quickly. Now the problem with the environment map is that we're not getting very good highlights on our on the top part, the plastic part. So let me also create an area light and let's move that round to say here and I'm going to increase the size of it to something quite big and let's have another look at this let's just move the scene view back to something like that and see what we get and we're still not getting very good highlights. Perhaps if we increase this a little bit. And I'm just going to pause the video while this renders out. Or in fact, let me stop this and render a proper render. And I'll pause the video while this is rendering. Well, that's now rendered out and it's looking pretty good. I just want to show you the difference between this as it is here and as it would be if we were applying a different gamma value. And the gamma adjustment can be made down here in this box on mplay. So let's change it up to the standard gamma of 2.2. And we can see that that looks even more now like uh, a silver uh, paper effect or a silver foil effect. And one of the things I'm going to discuss in the next tutorial is the use of gamma and how to convert your rendering process to what's called a linear process. So that'll be in the next tutorial.